Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm Priscilla. I'm the owner of A Lifeful Simplicity. Today I'll be going through my top 10 Oracle decks from 2021. Now, if you saw my top five tarot deck video, which I'll link uh, in the cards above, I talked about only my top five decks. Now, that was because I didn't use as many of my tarot decks as I thought I would in 2021, so I only chose five to be in my top five uh, instead of doing a top ten. Now, for my oracle decks, however, I use quite a number of my oracle decks. So, I'm doing a top ten because I used more than I did my tarot. So starting at number 10, we have the Halloween Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. This is a Blue Angel publication. Now, I absolutely love this deck. And it's in my 10th position because it's seasonal and I only use it during Halloween. So I use this deck throughout the entirety of October in 2021, and I paired it with my uh, Nightmare Before Christmas deck. The pairing, absolutely beautiful. They go so well together. And the readings that I got from it were absolutely fantastic. I use this for like a daily poll. So usually, typically for my daily polls, I'll pull like an oracle card for the focus and then I'll pull um, two cards from the tarot to like just enhance the oracle message a bit. And I just really, really love this. Now, recently I saw a video that Danny Mystic made, uh, and she talked about her Oracle decks, and she said that she sometimes takes out the really Halloween-y cards and keeps them in the box and uses the rest of the deck throughout the year. I thought that was interesting, and I'm kind of toying with the idea of doing that though there's so little cards in this deck i feel like the oracle will be so small <laughs> in comparison but i could do that starting more in the fall maybe uh starting september i could start using this deck and just leaving out some of the the more Halloween-y type of um, Oracle cards and just focusing on the ones that are not so Halloween like this, for example, and using it before October comes and then using it during October with all the cards and then maybe a little bit in the beginning of November. But I don't know, we'll see this year how it goes. As, a, as, as I'm sure you know, I have a lot of decks, so we'll see. But I do love this with the Nightmare Before Christmas. This is definitely the pairing that I love the most when it comes to Halloween or the month of October. So that's why it's at the 10th position because it's a um, seasonal deck for me. But I still really love it. And also I use the other decks that are higher in the list way more throughout the year, obviously, because this is just one month of the year. Then in the ninth position of my top 10 decks, I have the Seasons of the Witch Yule Oracle by Lauren Anderson, Julia Diaz, and Giada Rose. This is a Rockpool publication. And... This, again, is another seasonal deck for me, so I only use it during the month of December. I also paired it with the Nightmare Before Christmas. The pairing was not bad, um, but I'm sure I can probably find, like, maybe another deck that I can pair with this that's specifically more Christmassy. Uh, but I have yet to really look into that, but yeah. So I put this at 9. Again, it's a seasonal deck for me. But I absolutely love the Christmas season. So Christmas is actually my favorite holiday. It would be Christmas then Halloween for me. And that's why I put this at 9. So it's still a seasonal deck. But I put this at 9 because 
in terms of holidays, this would be higher than Halloween. Um, I love the messages that I got from this deck. I use it as, a, again, daily pulls. Um, sometimes I would just even pull just this and not even pull a tarot card with it or two tarot cards with it. I would just pull this for just like a focus or a daily message. And I really enjoyed the readings that I got with this particular deck. I love this series as a whole as well. The art style is absolutely beautiful and really got me into wanting all the decks. Uh, obviously, I started off with the Samhain deck, which I bought in 2020. So obviously, you won't see that here. And I'm just really excited for the rest of the decks to come out so I can have the entire series because once I have the entire series, I'll be able to use them literally in like in succession from each other. So we'd have Yule, in bulk, then all the rest of the holidays, Mabon. I some of them I don't know which order they go in. I think Beltane is in May. Ostara is in March, right? Or April or something. I think Ostara comes before Beltane. And then there's uh, the Summer Solstice, Lamas, Mabon, Samhain, and Yule again. So, yeah, I just really... I'll be able to work with these, like, almost every single month pretty, pretty much once the entire series is out. So I'm really excited for that. And... Like I said, it gives me great messages. I have no issues with working with this deck at all. I resonate entirely. Sometimes it calls me out, which is great. <laughs> I really don't mind when my decks call me out. Like, I, sometimes I need someone to call me out on my shit. So, I absolutely love this. This is a beautiful card, Darkest Hour. And I love the little poetries. Little poetry things that are here. Um on the bottom, like underneath the name of the card. It's just great. And the guidebook is fantastic. I do work with the, the guidebook after reading the message on the card. I'll work with um, the guidebook as well to understand greater or to see if I'm on the track with my own intuition based on how I'm looking at the card. There's also keywords in the guidebook. So sometimes I'll look at the card, I'll read the little message, I'll think about what it's saying, and then I'll go in the guidebook just to look at the keyword for this particular card. And then that's it. Sometimes I won't even read the message uh, that's in there. So yes, that's why it's at number nine. Beautiful deck. Absolutely love it. Can't wait for the rest of the other decks to come out. Then in number eight, we have the Oracle of Mystical Moments by Katrine Wells-Stein. This is a U.S. Games publication. And I put this at number eight uh, mainly because it is a deck that I worked with quite a bit. I started working with it with the tarot uh, because I also have the tarot of mystical moments. But the keywords sometimes just don't do it for me. Really, the imagery is what... I really love about this deck and there are times when I do um, use the guidebook with this particular deck. I'll look at the keywords in, in the guidebook to really understand the message. There are times when I just look at the imagery um, for this because sometimes the phrases at the bottom just like what? <laughs> like well, the card I just showed here Eva or Eva. I'm not sure however you want to pronounce the name here like what what keyword is this like I don't know and looking at this like what are you getting from it you know deceit is apparently a keyword with this particular card but sometimes I don't know I don't really get that vibe from the card so sometimes there's like a little bit of a mix and match so I haven't used it as much as probably the decks buff, like above this one, um, but I have used it more than the seasonal decks that I just showed. So, yes. But the imagery is perfect. It's beautiful. Matte. I took this with me when I went away for the weekend with the tarot. I used them together. I did some readings for myself while I was away. And yeah, I just... 
I just really, I don't know, I just really love this sometimes. Even if sometimes it's a little harder to understand with the keywords or the key phrases. Honestly, sometimes I don't really, this one reminds me of Rihanna's song. <laughs> so every time I see it, I'm just like, under my umbrella, la, 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 a, a. <laughs> Uh, don't diss my singing. I don't know how to sing. So yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you just trigger things like that. And sometimes I'm just like, what's going on, you know? And sometimes it's just more, it makes more sense, you know, the art of seduction. Now that makes sense. Sometimes not so much like morning do girl. What? But yes, I just... I just love the imagery and that's really why I've used it a lot in 2021. Then for number seven, we have the Sacred Creators Oracle. This is by Chris Ann. This is a Hay House publication. And I absolutely love this deck. So it's at number seven because it's more of an affirmation type deck. And I use this a lot in 2021 really to set goals for myself for journaling um there are prompts in the guidebook like journal prompts that you can use and i love this because it helped me a lot to like set goals for myself and create more and do more fun stuff for me but also it's just great for just everyday daily polls. I use this also for daily polls for myself. Sometimes I'll use it as an extra message with, um, uh, what's it called? Some of her other decks, like the Muse Tarot, for example, or like um, Light Seers. Sometimes I'll do that. And I just, I just really love it. Stop, drop, and ground. Now, every card does have keywords in the guidebook, which is fantastic. Um, there's like an actual oracle message, and then, as I said, journal prompts and stuff. I do have an unboxing of this if you like to check it out. I just love the simplicity of it and how fun it looks with the watercolor and everything. And I don't know, I just really... Yeah, I, I just love it. I just love it so much. There's not, not really much else I can say other than it really helped me to um, shift my focus and, and really prepare some of the goals that I've set for myself for this year by using it. And I guess also... Um, it helped me also to um, make changes and to see different things like different perspectives and stuff like that in terms of creating and creations. So yeah, like this card, for example, overthinking can spoil the magic. And it's true. And sometimes as creators, we get caught up. We get so caught up in creating for Instagram and trying to put ourselves out there and we don't put enough effort into just creating for ourselves instead of creating for other people and I find this deck really helped me to open up to that and to not just put so much pressure on myself to create for others the stuff that I'm putting out is because I want to put it out and because I love what I'm creating and that's really the point of creating things and this deck really helped me to focus in on that kind of perspective. And I absolutely love it for that. It's great. So if you're the type of person who creates things or just you want a deck for affirmations, like this is great even if you're not a creator, honestly, and just doing stuff for you, like limitations inspire innovations. This could represent anything. It could represent your daily life. It could represent your job, for example, that you have, even if you're not creating stuff. It could be for anything. That's why I absolutely uh, love this, uh, love this deck. <clears throat> 
So I highly recommend that. That's why it's in the seventh position because it's an affirmation and the other decks I've used way more throughout the year. But this is, this is a deck that I've used when I've needed it. And it, ch it changed me a lot. So highly recommend this. In the sixth position, I have the Self Care Wisdom cards. This is by Cheryl Richardson and Poe, uh, sorry, Joe Podmore. Uh, this is another Hay House publication. This is really just a beautiful self care deck. I absolutely love it. Um, it has an image, a keyword, and then the messages are on the back. And I just love this, you know, just a simple daily thing or even just, you know, something to pull before you go to bed. It's very soft, very gentle. And I just love that about it. And it's in my sixth position. Uh, I got this towards, um, when was it? September? I think it was in, it came out in September and I got it right, like right after it came out or right when it came out, I ordered it. Um, and I used it the rest of the year for myself, just pulling some cards and just like ref reflecting on the cards that I pulled or shuffled out um, and things to like focus on for myself. I got this card quite, quite a bit. Uh, the calmer you are, the more time slows down, the easier it is to get everything done. And I think I got this a lot because it was Q4 and my job is crazy during Q4, so uh, fourth quarter if people are not in business. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just really love this and it's a great deck to have if you need, you know, that extra push or that extra hug or whatever it is. Your thinking will either make you hap uh, make your happiness or take your happiness, you choose. And that's very true, you know. It does. And then there's like priorities and self and shine. Like it's so amazing. And I believe this was an indie deck. And uh, Hay House picked it up, picked it up as a to create as mass market. But I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that because I don't know. That's what I thought when I saw it. Like I looked it up when I found it on Amazon Can. I remember googling it and then. I found like a different version of it. I I, am, I don't think it was a bootleg, but I think it was on, on her website. Anyway, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm just making stuff up. I don't even know here. I love this time card. Like it's so beautiful. So great. Um, I'm actually planning to use this as a, a pairing next month in March uh, with my Good Karma Tarot. I think they would pair beautifully together. So we'll shall, we shall see how that works out. Um, both of them are soft decks, so <laughs> we shall see with the good karma. Though I haven't used it, so I don't know what kind of readings it gives. For all I know, it gives a very sassy reading, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Then in the fifth position, I have the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. So this is a Rockpool publication. It is an entirely a moon deck. So I use this deck primarily to work with the moon. It has literally different, um, it has every phase, uh, like every phase of the moon in here. So it goes from like, you know, all the wanings, all the waxings, gibbous, crescent, things like that. And then we have like the new moon, the dark moon, the full moon, all that good stuff. And it goes through the whole entire cycle. So I love this to work with the moon that we're in. So I love like looking at the moon calendar. I have a few apps for moon calendars and stuff like that. It also has the monthly moons in here, which are associated with the full moon. So you can actually take out the full moon and then take out the uh, named moon uh, for that specific month and work with them together. That's typically how I do it. Of course, you can use this for Oracle messages as well. Sometimes I do use this for just regular readings. And I just love what I have gotten from it. Uh, it's really great to focus on specific energies. 
during the moons I try my best to do moon readings every month like at least a new moon and a full moon reading sometimes it doesn't always happen but because I'm busy or I just don't have time or maybe I'm tired and just don't feel like focusing <laughs> on moons and whatnot I just want to relax um, or doing a reading because I just want to relax but I just really love this deck the imagery is fantastic I have my eye on a few other decks by her as well that are also rock pool publications that I want to look into like her element one and uh, she has I think an animal one as well but I love the energy that I get from this particular deck when I use it and I use it quite a bit obviously for moon work and whatnot so yeah I think it's great I also have um, the tarot by the moon book which is also it's this is by Llewellyn um it's published by Llewellyn it's a moon spread book and I love doing moon spreads and sometimes I'll pull the the full moon card as well as the moon of that month and then the moon card of that month and then I'll focus on a specific spread from that book so that's sometimes how I use this and that's why I put it at number five because it's one that I use often but not as often as everything above it so that's why it's at number five but it's a great deck honestly fantastic coming in at number four I have the Earthcraft Oracle by Juliette Diaz and Lorraine Anderson the art for this deck is by uh, Danielle Boudou Fortune absolutely love this deck so much so i use this quite a bit in 2021 i worked with it actually in january uh, with the new chapter tarot so beautiful really focuses on the earth very earth inspired energy and the colors are just so beautiful honestly this is a perfect spring summer deck and I worked with it last month specifically because I really wanted that kind of energy, <laughs> that kind of energy in my life at the time. Uh, it does have, you know, more thought provoking depth uh, cards like death and thunderstorm. It's not all like positive, positive. There's darkness even. So I really love that. There's a card for every single direction, which I actually really love. You can do like a directional reading with it. I think there's also spreads in the in the guidebook, if I'm not mistaken. There's this card here, Rise, where she's like rising, but she's also cracking, which I, the imagery brings like so much emotion and so much depth. And I just really love that. And yeah i just really enjoyed working with this deck and still working with it it's definitely a fantastic one and the colors are just gorgeous i really hope that she does more more decks um the artist for this particular one danielle uh voodoo fortune because she's an amazing artist I would totally pick up more uh, decks um, that feature her artwork in it because this is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And then of course the duo, Julia Diaz and Lauren Anderson, they're fantastic together. I absolutely love when they do stuff together. Um, and of course they have their Seasons of the Witch series together, so more to come from them in terms of that so i just really love it this spiritual journey card is so beautiful and the readings that i've gotten from it are pretty powerful in my opinion i do i love this i have used it as like daily pull um because i enjoy really using um or as like a daily message and of course with working with a tarot the messages are just really great in my opinion because you have that added energy boost to the oracle with the two uh tarot cards so i just i love i love working with this deck and that's why it's at number four and then in our top three position i have the spirit animal oracle by colette baron reed artwork is by jenna della grottaglia or Gret grottaglia i think um again i always mix up her her last name so whichever one 
she's amazing. <laughs> so yes, I have quite a number of decks uh, by Colette Baron reed with the same artist. So I love her artwork. Now, it's in my third position. I have used this quite a lot in 2021. I actually bought this in the beginning of, well, I ordered it at the end of 2020, but I didn't receive it until January because it was on back order. So I've been using this for like a quite a lot uh, in like one year. And I absolutely love the messages that I get from this. This is actually one of my favorite, it's probably my top in my top two animal oracle decks top one would be animal kin but i got that in 2020 and absolutely love the messages that i get from this the guidebook is so extensive and so amazing and there's always a lot to focus on uh in terms of the messages that colette always has because you also have like you have the oracle message and then you have a protective message which is supposed to be the reversal but I don't use reversals typically with Oracle decks. I do look at her protective message though to see if there's things that I could focus on more on. And it really helps to open up um, to like different perspectives, I think, with what you can focus on more of, uh, what you're doing currently, and what you can focus more on. And the uh, animals that were chosen, some of them are really interesting. Like there's a bobcat um, animal in here, um, which I've never seen in a deck before. I think this is the only one that has a bobcat that I own. I believe anyway. I really have to go through and see. But I just love it. I love it for animal messages and just like daily pulls. I have used this deck for readings for other people. So I have given readings with this as well. And um, I've ha I haven't had any complaints, so I'm assuming that the messages that I have given from the cards have resonated a lot. Uh, when I read for others, I go based on the the uh, sentence that's on the card. I typically don't look in the guidebook when I read for other people, but I only do that for myself. But yes, um, it's really based on intuition is how I read that for other people. So I just really, really enjoy this and the artwork is absolutely fantastic. I love the artwork so much and yeah, I've really, really enjoyed using this deck and that's why it's in my, my top three. Coming in at number two is The Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed Again, the artwork is by Jenna Della Grataglia, Grataglia, I'm not sure. Um, and I picked this up in September and I've used it quite a bit since then, honestly. Absolutely love this. I use this a lot to read for other people. I have used it for myself for daily pulls as well. The messages that I have gotten from this have been fantastic, really eye-opening and helped me to make changes for myself. And I just really, really love this deck. Um, the readings that I've done for other people have been really fantastic. I have, again, received no complaints, really eye-opening and helpful. And I just really love reading with this deck. It's really my go-to when it comes to reading for others. So I have used it quite a lot since I've gotten it. Because um, I do read on like other communities and stuff for others. So... Yeah, I just really love the imagery. The imagery is so fun. Uh, really out there, really interesting. The faces sometimes freak me out, but <laughs> it's a random face. But yeah, she has like a ra random face here, face here, face here. Really weird, but I love it. It's so great. My favorite card is the time for a nap. <laughs> it's so fun. So yeah, this is like an everyday deck, um, especially since uh, the messages are so good. You can like the book, the guidebook for this is fantastic. It has like keywords, you have an oracle message, you have a relationship message, you have like a finance career message, and then you have like a protective message, which is great also. I love protective messages that Colette adds to her guidebooks specifically for... Um, just uh, things that you can focus on more on. Uh, so looking at that to f see what you can focus on more or do more of. 
I, I love it for that. So definitely a great deck. That's why it's in my top two for myself. Lastly, coming in at number one, the Sacred Forest Oracle by Denise Lynn. This is another Hay House publication. Uh, so have like all the Colette Baron Reed ones that I just mentioned. <laughs> So, yes, this is my number one because it's my most used in 2021. I don't remember when I bought this deck, but I bought it a while ago. And I absolutely love the imagery in this deck. Love it so much. And I find it to be so fantastic. So the messages are so great. And... I've just really enjoyed using this particular deck. I have used it for multiple readings for myself, daily pulls, daily focus. Um, I've used it pairing with uh, the Orion's Animal Tarot last month. So I have used it quite a lot in 2021 as well as I've already used it again this year. And I just love it. There's a season card for each season. So autumn, spring, winter, summer. You can do seasonal uh, readings with this, which I have done for myself. I also have used this to read it for other people. It reads fantastic for other people. And I just love the imagery of this. Like, absolutely love it. It's also a deck I've put on my, like, what I consider my altar space, I guess. So, yeah, I just really love this so much. I've used it for um, spreads and whatnot. I just absolutely love this. This is probably, honestly, again, if I do the... Um, Katie Flowers tag, which I'm hoping to do at some point, the only 10 decks tag, this would be in that. Like, there's no question about it. This would be one of my top 10 out of all the decks that I own. And I don't own just the decks that I showed in, like, my Tarot from 2021 and Oracle from 2021 uh, videos. I have way more than that. <laughs> Those are just the decks from 2021. So... Yes, this would be like in my top 10, 100%, because I love this deck so much, and it reads so well, like so well. If you don't have this deck, I definitely highly recommend looking into it if it's something that interests you. If the imagery interests you, I have an unboxing, check it out. I show the guidebook. You can see how it's structured and everything, so definitely check that out, because this is definitely a great deck, I think, to have in like... If you're interested in this kind of fairy tale fantasy kind of imagery because that's what it is it's like fairy tale fantasy kind of imagery and it's like photo kind of realism type collage deck which I don't mind I actually don't mind decks like that but it's so beautiful like showing pictures not even focused yeah so it's just really interesting definitely definitely recommend and I'm so happy to have it as my top one my top 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 oracle decks so I do thank you so much for watching this was my top 10 oracle decks from 2021 I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you stick with me for the rest of the content that I'll be putting out this year. Plus, there's always next year for, for all the decks that I buy in 2022, right? So, and I'm sure I'll buy quite a bit. Um, yeah, I have some great things coming that I'm really excited about. So definitely don't forget to subscribe turn on that bell so you can be notified every time i post a brand new video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up it's greatly appreciated let me know in the comments if you have any of these decks how you use them let me know if uh any of these decks interest you like are you would this be on your wish list are you planning to purchase i'd love to hear what you think of these decks also what did you buy in uh what are your top 10 uh, decks or top five or whatever uh oracle decks from 2021 let me know in the comments i'd love to hear from you i'm sure there's things that i maybe i don't have and that i can add to my wish list 
my growing, growing wish list. But yes, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a great day.